everyone, Liam here. Welcome to this week's YouTube video. This week we're going to be starting on a Tyranid Winged Hive Tyrant. I've had a huge amount of requests over the last few months to paint a larger Tyranid in the same scheme as I did the previous Gene Stealers and Broodlord, but also to do it without an airbrush. So that's what we're going to start. Now this model is huge, so we're going to need to break it down into two or three videos to go over everything. So as always, I hope it's helpful. If you've got any questions, queries, leave them in the comments below. I'll absolutely get back to you. If you want to support the channel, as always, feel free to check out the Patreon for more in-depth video tutorials and one-to-one -one tuition options because I do teach full time. But without further ado, here we go. Thanks for watching. So the model is primed black. The black base coat gives us a really dark undertone to start. And it also means if there's any areas in the shadows that I end up missing with the paintbrush, not really going to see them because if we do it in a brighter color obviously they're going to stand out so from my perspective this is a speed thing then what i'm doing what i've done is i've gone over that black with the vallejo game color whole red so the whole of the black is covered so it gives us this really dark reddish base color what we're doing is we're working with three colors on this so Vallejo game color whole red and Vallejo game color light brown now, I don't want to jump straight to the light brown because it's gonna it's just gonna be too bright. So I'm mixing up a rough mix of 50-50 light brown and whole red. Now this doesn't have to be perfect, can't stress this enough, because the whole point of this is as you can see on screen at the moment, this paint is very wet and I'm being very rough with it. So what I've got is I'm using some cheap makeup brushes that I got from a makeup store. Um, and I've got several different sizes. There's no point buying expensive brushes for this because we're not exactly treating them particularly well. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is after we've base coated the model with whole red, we're mixing up that mix of whole red and light brown, and then we're going to stipple with these makeup brushes. So you can see how I keep dabbing this makeup brush. So I want to just start building up some texture so it doesn't look like a very smooth finish because I want it to look more interesting than that. And with this mix, what I'm doing is I'm working all of the areas that are facing upwards, that are facing the light. So if there's areas of the model that are just facing down and we're never going to see them, I'm not even bothering painting them because this is an army piece. If you want it to be, if you want it to be a higher quality, then obviously you're going to need to work those areas as well. But I haven't done that. I'm not worried about any of the details whatsoever. You can see that I've got an absolutely massive brush and I'm just dabbing over the whole of this model. So this is all the skin areas. I'm not worried about going into going over the carapace or anything like that. The whole point of starting with the skin first means that we can work with a very big brush. And we can work very quickly. Now, it's really difficult to explain the paint consistency that you want here because for me, I want this paint wet when I'm working over it because because this paint is wet what happens is is when we put a brighter color over it or we put the brighter color over the previous darker layer what's going to happen is you can actually mix that color together by stabbing the paintbrush onto the actual model which is what I'm doing so I'm getting a very rough blend because I'm mixing that paint on the model while it's still wet so what I would say to you is don't thin the paint too much because if you thin the paint too much what ends up happening is that paint will just dry very quickly. So you want the paint to, to, to still be quite thick. So what I would say as a rough guide, probably equal parts water to equal part paints as a general rule might work, but it depends on the brand of paint that you're using. So the best way of saying it is just keep the paint as opaque as possible while still being fluid. So you don't want, what I mean by that is you don't want to leave massive thick puddles of paint on the model but you also want to see, you want that paint to make an actual huge difference when you put it on the model. So you still want it nice and opaque. The other thing is you can see just to the right of the screen right now, I've got that, it looks like a little white square where my hand is, that's just kitchen roll. So when I'm putting this paint on my brush, I'm removing excess paint. So I don't have too much paint because if we don't remove the excess paint, what you're gonna end up having in is, is just this huge thick blob of paint which will obscure, obscure all your details so by removing the excess you don't have that problem and that's how you just don't ruin the model ultimately 
what you'll notice is I do take breaks on this. So sometimes the paint isn't wet, sometimes the paint is wet. I would suggest if you're trying to go for a nice smooth blend and you're not really done much of this type of painting, keep the paint wet and work it all very quickly and just mix the paint on the model. Like I can't stress enough, this enough. The whole point of this is you just mix the paint on the model. Experiment with it and have fun. It really is supposed to be like a very easy Easy is a bit harsh, but easy is, easy is a bit too extreme, but it's supposed to be an enjoyable and straightforward process. Slap the paint on the model, mix it together on the model with this with this stippling motion, with this stabbing motion, with this big makeup brush, and get the volumes that you like. And you're really gonna see this on the wing as well, how I'm just not paying attention to the details around it, because I'm gonna get it everywhere. So this is still the initial mix i'm covering the whole of this the the whole of the arm sections for the wing in this paint and you can see it's also very inconsistent like i'm not worrying about a flat nice like complete coverage i want those previous layers that previous dark color to show through because that gives me more more of an interesting result this this skin i don't want like perfectly flat and smooth because that looks very cartoony and that's not what we're going for at all. So the whole point of doing this stippling with the massive makeup brush is it gives us a very inconsistent base coat and that's what we want. Don't worry about getting perfect coverage across the whole thing. You don't want that. It's going to look very unnatural if you do it that way. So next up what we're gonna do is we're gonna move straight to, we're gonna move um, we're going to move to a brighter version of this light brown. And we're going to start working over certain areas this time. So what I mean by that is I'm no longer just going to paint all of the areas that are facing upwards. I'm going to start separating different parts of the actual model itself. So you can see the arm that I've just put some paint on. I've put paint towards the end of the arm, closer towards the hand, but not so much towards the elbow now there's no reason to that i just wanted to make the elbow darker so it adds some interest to the actual model and you're going to see this on the leg as well you can see i'm stippling towards the top of the leg and towards the top of the ankle joint but not so much towards the knee my logic on this is nothing to do with light placement or anything like that i just think it's going to look cool if we've got closer towards those joints darker you can go with something like with with more realistic lighting if you want to i just didn't want to bother i didn't want to think that too much i didn't want to think about it too much i prefer the idea if i'm doing an army especially something like this where i don't have to overthink it so if i've just got a rule where towards knee joints i'm leaving it darker or elbow joints i'm leaving it darker and then i go brighter towards the hands and shoulders or, or something like that it just makes from an army painting perspective, it makes things much easier. I can go into autopilot more and I can work faster because of that. Because I'm not trying to improve my painting here. All I'm doing is trying to trying to work with a nice result to get as much speed as I possibly can. That's that's all all the priority. So it's about efficiency. That's it. I want light areas next to dark areas that will make it pop i want a very efficient routine so i can paint these models as quick as possible and i would be painting these models multiples at a time so if i had let's say two hive tyrants to do three hive tyrants to do or just three or four large models which are similar then i would be painting all of them at the same time i would be painting each stage of this skin on all of the models at the same time and it will speed things up quite a lot you can see that i've jumped to a smaller makeup brush here i said to you earlier that these makeup brushes are very cheap i bought like a set of different size makeup brushes for i think like six or seven quid from a makeup shop and they're they're really really handy especially for more organic shapes as opposed to um, like space marines and that sort of stuff when it comes to armored panels you need to be a lot more precise about the shapes of your your volumes but with tyrannies you don't really need to be because they're because the shapes are all organic you can really just kind of 
go to town and, and make it up and you don't have to be so precise, which is why these brushes are really, really handy. There's no point buying expensive ones, like I said, because you're just going to absolutely ruin them. But the point of the small brush is now we're picking out the areas that we want to be the brightest. So the top of the legs, the shoulders, towards the end of the arms or wherever you choose. It's entirely up to you. I do kind of have a rule where I'm working brighter towards the elbow joint, sorry, towards the hands and the shoulders, not so much towards the elbows. But as soon as it's relevant, I am, I'm breaking that rule as well. Like you can see the elbow on the left hand side, I've actually done that brighter. And the reason why I chose to do that is because the elbow is more prominent than the shoulder and the hands on that side. So because it's going to look better, because it's going to look cooler, that's what I'm doing. So I'm not overthinking this. As long as you have a dark area next to a light area, you'll be absolutely fine. And remember, the majority of this is going to be covered. Can't stress that enough. Now, the wing I kept really simple. Basically, with the wings, it's the same as the arms. Any of the fleshy parts, like the muscly parts and the hands, I made brighter. With the bone fingers that the, the, hold the wing membranes, I don't know what they're called. Basically, towards the joints, I made brighter, and towards the centers, towards the center of those fingers, I made darker. That was pretty much it. There wasn't any logic behind it. I just thought, you know what? I need to separate. I need to separate those fingers somehow. I need to have a dark area next to a light area to make them pop. What am I going to do? We'll go with that. There wasn't any. I wasn't thinking about lighting or anything like that. It was just. That's what I'm going to do. It will work. It will look good. That's good enough for me. It's up to you how you do it. But again, as I said, the next part of this, we're going to start painting over all of it anyway to build up the texture, the actual texture that we want. It's it can be very easy to fall back into the routine of trying to get everything very consistent, but I can't stress this enough. That's not what you want. Now that I've zoomed into this model, you can see this paintwork is not particularly good. The blends are not very good. It looks very mottled. It looks very messy. That's what you want. We're now going to end up hiding all of that anyway. The first thing that we need to do, so we, this is the Vallejo Game Color Light Brown. The first thing that we need to do is define the shapes on this model. When we're army painting, I mean, when we're painting in general, but it's more important when we're army painting, we need to have clear readability of the model because most of the time when we're army painting we're looking at these models from far away we need to be able to look at these models and clearly understand the shapes that we are looking at because if we don't they're they're nowhere near as striking and our brains are very lazy so when we look at stuff it, it, the, our, our brains will just kind of make up the gaps that we can't see but the more that our brains make up, the more mistakes that we're going to make when we're looking at it and the less impressive it is. So what we need to prioritize here is defining the shapes. It's up to you how you do that. In this case, ultimately what I'm doing is just edge highlighting anywhere which is going to define a shape for me. Now with this, it's not gonna look unnatural or anything like that or weird because we're gonna have so many lines all over this model anyway. But on areas like for especially the foot, you can see how complicated that shape is. Or sorry, not the foot, the lower leg, like below the ankle. I don't know what it is. But you can see how we've got all these different shapes everywhere just by defining them, just by placing a line and defining that shape. It makes it so we can clearly understand what's going on. This is one of the most important things when it comes to painting Tyranids. Because we've got something that's vaguely humanoid um, but it, it's not naturally what we're used to seeing. So it can be very challenging for us to understand what we're looking at from far away. So we need to help with that as much as possible. And you can see with these lines, so bearing in mind, I'm not building up the texture in the actual flat areas at the moment, but I haven't even got to that. What I'm doing is I'm following the shape of the sculpt. So the sculpture has given us clear shapes in certain areas and I'm following those shapes and I'm defining those shapes that the sculptor has given me. Now, if there's flat areas in between those shapes, you can just kind of make it up and paint some lines in to, to, make, to make it interesting. And that's, that's the enjoyable part of this because you just get to experiment and 
you can see with with like the I don't know whatever that bone is that sticks out at the back of the ankle there. The top of that bone, we're going to have a bright area on the on the curve, but as it as it moves into the foot, you can see all I've done is just painted loads of lines in. I mean, that doesn't really make sense if we were going for a more traditional light in style, but that's not what's important here. What's important is this this line texture that you get from like the old aliens movies and, and the old alien artwork and that sort of stuff. I forget the name of the artist that does it. I think it's Geiger or something like that. Now, if you look at his artwork, you'll see exactly what I mean. The whole idea with this is, is we want that line pattern running through the whole of this model. Because we're going to have that into the flat areas of the muscles, it will look perfectly normal when we edge highlight everything. Because ultimately that's what it is. We are edge highlighting everything to make clearly defined shapes. With the light brown, this light brown is the foundation of this texture. So this is not going to stand out very much until we move on to the ivory, so the brighter color next. That's when it will really start to pop. So the idea with this, this light brown is if there's areas that we miss or if there's areas that we want to keep darker, this texture, all of these lines that we're painting, that will show through and it will support the next highlight, which is what, which is the most important part of this model. Now with the, the muscles themselves, you need to follow the shape of the muscles. So although this is an alien, ultimately we can, we can kind, we, we kind of know that the muscles are going to be similar to the humans and you can see from the shape of the legs that your, the muscles are going to be running down the length of the legs. So that means that those lines that we're painting are going to do the exact same thing. Now, I know a lot of people struggle painting lines and I did for a long time. So there are parts of this model that I haven't been particularly careful. Ultimately, the smaller the lines that you do, the thinner the lines that you do, the, for me, the, the nicer the result that you're going to get. It's not to say that you're not going to get a bad result. You're just going to get a different result. So if you struggle with painting lines, what you need to do, your paint consistency, you want as opaque as possible, right? You don't want transparent paint for this because if you have transparent paint, what's going to happen is you're going to end up building up actually a very soft blend of lines. You're going to get a completely different result. You're going to get a completely different texture and it's not going to look as prominent as what I have. Now, if you're going for that, then that's absolutely fine. Feel free to experiment, but we want opaque lines on this. The other thing is, is if we've got very thin lines, sorry, if we've got very transparent paint for the lines, what's going to happen is you're going to have to build up loads and loads of layers for a single line. And you don't really want that because first of all, it takes ages. Like this isn't a particularly fast process anyway, but it's going to it's going to take you ages and you're never going to get if you if you paint a line and then keep trying to paint over that line exactly the same every time you're not going to get that you're going to make mistakes that line is going to end up in a different place it's going to some of it's going to end up wider and it can get very messy so in this case you want to thin your paint down as little as possible you only want to thin your paint down to the point where you are no longer going to leave big blobs of paint on the model so thin the paint down enough so it's not really really thick and blobby and keep the paint as opaque as possible so you don't want to be able to see through it as much and this is why for this particular paint style i prefer to use vallejo or more specifically when we get to the next stage vallejo model color because it's a very opaque paint but it's up to you 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 work with what your preference are not all paints are created equal so anyway, so that's the paint consistency. The next thing that you want to do, when you get your paint on your brush, remove the excess paint. So for me, I'm using a bit of kitchen roll. Every time I put paint on my brush, I remove the excess paint onto the kitchen roll. And the way that I do that is I just run my paintbrush along the length of the kitchen roll, along the kitchen roll, and twist the brush as I go. This removes the excess paint. And what it does as well is as you twist it, it restores the point of your brush which is really important. If you've got a nice point on your brush, then you're gonna have a easier time of getting a nice straight consistent line. The other thing as well is as you, as I'm painting, what you'll see is my brush stroke is always going towards my wrist. So my brush stroke is always coming towards the length, 
the direction of my wrist. This is because when you do that, you have far more control, which is really important. If, you're, if you've got shaky hands at all, what you can do to help with that is you can exhale as you do your brush stroke. If you exhale as you do your brush stroke, it will steady your hands. This is something that, that people do when they're shooting and that sort of stuff, and it really does help. If you hold your breath, that will help in the short term, but it has lots of knock-on effects on the long term. If you're painting loads of these, or if you're painting for like two or three hours, you don't want to keep holding your breath. You think about exhaling as you go, and that will help you quite a lot. Now you can see here with the, I've started on the arm on the left hand side. I obviously can't show the whole of this model because it's a huge model and it, it would end up as like a nine hour video, which is just ridiculous. So you can see how I'm painting these lines, the length of that arm. There's no sculpted details on that arm there, but it's just those long sweeping lines that go the length of the arm. With this, with this, with these lines of the light brown, as I said earlier, this is the foundation of the texture, right? I am going over all of it. I'm going over the darker areas and the lighter areas that we painted on with the makeup brushes earlier. And what you'll find is in the darker areas, the paint will leave quite a strong mark and it will look quite nice. But in the lighter areas, it will do virtually nothing. You won't, sometimes you won't even see the mark that you make. That's perfectly fine. This is the foundation of the texture. So when we move on to the ivory later on, ivory will stand out in the brighter areas. And that's 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 where this will start to pop. So with this light brown, we're going over everything, even the darker areas where we left that, that darker whole red color with the makeup brushes. This layer is to create the foundation of the texture that we're actually trying to achieve and it's to define all of the shapes on the model. So when we look at this model from far away, we clearly understand what those shapes are. And if that means that we need to invent things to make it easier to understand, invent shapes, then that's absolutely fine. This is all about lines, all about painting those lines to create shape that we're trying to achieve. So you follow the muscles, you follow the direction of the muscles, and you paint multiple lines in that shape and you'll really see that on the shoulders and the, the length of the arms and then you're placing in edge highlights with this paint that's pretty much it. it does take a while it's not a quick process the more opaque paint you've got the faster it will take and also the more opaque the paint is that you're using the heavier this texture on this material will look on the skin so the rougher the skin will look sorry which is what i'm trying to achieve now you can see with the ribs the ribs are really nice and easy i just paint loads of lines along the length of the ribs there's not really a huge amount that we can do with them there's not a lot of space there they're not very complicated shape so lots of little lines and you can although this ends up looking nice at the end in the end you can see that actually i really haven't been crazy neat with this like this is this is why this this type of painting is so enjoyable because we don't have to panic about getting everything smooth and crisp and clean all we do is just paint loads of lines all over it as long as we get the directions right as in the direction that runs the length of the, the limbs and that sort of shape that sort of stuff it will look fine so don't overthink it there's there's just no point overthinking it at all lots of little lines to create and define the shapes now this is where we're going to start to make it pop you can see that the the light brown in on the palette has got brighter all what i've done is i've added loads of vallejo model color ivory to it you can go as bright as you want with this i didn't want to go straight to i didn't i didn't want to go to pure ivory because it's got a lot of white in it again i'm looking for opacity and what you're going to find here as well as as i paint you're going to see that my brush marks are much much stronger that's because this paint is far more opaque than the vallejo, vallejo game color Vallejo model color is a much more opaque and potent paint. So it makes more of an impact. Now, what I'm gonna do here with these, I'm painting these lines to follow the, the shapes of the leg and the muscles, and I'm making it up just like I did before, but the Vallejo model color ivory is going to be more towards the brighter areas of this model. So what 
what that means is that doesn't mean that in the darker areas of the limbs i'm not going to put ivory it means that i'm going to put less so i'm going to put less marks so what you'll find is as i paint this leg you can see that there's more marks towards the top of this leg and not so many marks towards the bottom of the leg so towards the bottom of the thigh going towards the back of the knee joint because those marks in the dark area stand out a huge amount and we don't want that so it's nice to have a, a few little marks but we don't want lots and lots of them we want those marks to be in the brighter areas because this is what's going to make the skin actually pop and you can see here with the top of the leg here i'm actually just painting in like this little shape so it's almost like I've made this little circular shape at the top of the leg. And I've made it so it looks like that uh, the top of the bone there or whatever it is, is like really prominent and stretched around the skin. And I've done that just by placing in like those really strong lines. So it's almost like I've painted it an edge highlight around something that doesn't have a sharp edge. By making those lines really sharp and prominent, it's made that area look far more uh, like it's, it's made it clearly readable. It's 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 more striking than it's naturally would be on the sculpt. And there's no right or wrong way of doing this. As I said, the priority is ivory. We need more of the ivory or the ivory mix towards the brighter areas of the skin. So it's about amount here. And naturally, we need to make sure that we've got some of those previous colors showing through from the previous layers. I can't stress that enough. If you just go over everything, ultimately, you're going to lose all of the work that you've just done. And we really don't want that. This is the color that finishes it all off. This is what makes the skin pop. It's a combination of the color being so much brighter and also the paint being so opaque so we can get some really prominent strong marks on this but if we just go over everything and not have any of those previous layers showing through it's just going to look like a, a, a whitey brown black color and we really don't want that this is all about texture with that texture comes these lines and we don't want to just waste all of our time now again, be really careful with your brush marks. If you're going to spend time on this model to try and get a nice result, this is the time that you want to do it. If you if if you're if you I wasn't particularly careful with the previous steps. Right? I wasn't really that careful about how nice my brush marks were, how sharp my lines were or how good my blending was. I wasn't really that bothered because this is the stage that matters if you're going to spend time on this paint job you do it when you're at the ivory stage because the ivory is what everyone is going to see it's what is going to pop on this model so if you've got a big fat brush mark that you shouldn't have that you made a mistake doing they are everyone's going to see it if you made that brush mark on the previous layers no one's really going to notice it because they don't really stand out much because it's as i said as i said a few times those are the foundations of the texture. As soon as you get this ivory, this is what everyone sees. Dodgy mark here is going to really stand out. Now, because we don't have to paint so much of the model with this ivory, it's much, much faster. So it's worth spending the extra time and being careful about the marks you're making. This is also the part that's going to define the shapes mostly. All of the work that we did previously Yes, it's about defining the shapes and make it clearly readable. But again, because this ivory is so, so strong, this is the one that's going to make the most impact. So you can see with the hand, I've painted on those, I've started painting on the lines to define the shape of the top of the hand. Now, you can also see it looks a little bit messy at this point. The reason for that is, is that area of the hand is, it. That, that ivory there's too much ivory in that area that part of the hand is actually meant to be darker don't worry about it if you make that mistake because remember if we look back at the the, the gene stealer video that we did 
going to add some color into this later on and once you do that you can always tone down the ivory in certain areas so if you end up with a result that you're not particularly a fan of or some marks which are just a little bit too bright or don't quite look as appealing as you wanted to don't panic about it we can fix it by placing like really wet paint over it later on almost like a glaze or rather it would be a glaze effectively um, depending on how neat you are with it now what i would say to you is if there's areas of this model that you don't want to be noticed or you don't want to be so prominent leave the ivory off so for me towards the chest as an example i didn't really put any ivory because i'm not really that bothered about the chest the ivory is the color that's going to make it pop so if there's areas of the models that are just not that important then don't worry about it now the wing is a really good place to show this texture because the shapes are very simple so what we effectively have we have like this long spherical shape for the muscles but a spherical shape for the shoulder so what that means is you can see those lines are just following the shape and that that defines the actual organic shapes that we've got on this tyranid and it really is that simple we just want to follow the shapes that the sculptor has given us with lots of tiny little lines and you can see how much of a difference the ivory makes because it pops against the darkness now i know i haven't I've, I've had to break down this video into only certain parts on the model because there's just so much of it but ultimately the shapes on these tyranids are all the same when it comes to the skin they don't have massive chunky flat areas it's just all of these all of these like long limbs so all you're doing is defining the edges to create readability and then you're painting these lines that follow the shape of the sculpt that is it you want to after this you can go brighter you could go to pure ivory you could even add some white into it that's what i did do on the broodlord that i painted previously i actually went up to white it's up to you. I would suggest you experiment with it. It depends on how much of a gritty, grimy look you want. You can go for something which is far more grim dark style if you wanted to by just not going so, so bright. But it's entirely up to you. As I said, this wing is a really good example. You can see how I'm just following the shape of the sculpt. You don't even need to overthink this too much. The sculpt has given the answer for you. The sculptor has given you the guide in shapes that you want to paint all you do is outline and then follow the shape of the actual muscle that you're painting the last thing that i think is worth showing is the actual fingers i'm calling them fingers of the the wing membrane itself so with these it's really really straightforward we're going to paint lines down the length of the actual finger itself and then you can see how i'm outlining the ends so i'm placing an edge highlight around the end of the finger and then i'm painting lines down the length of it that's it you don't need to go crazy with it but these are the only parts of the model that are a little bit more out of place in comparison in in comparison to the rest of the shapes on the body on the limbs so and and that's basically it you can see how i'm just painting those lines this is where you want really thin lines if possible because it would be nicer if you've got multiple lines as opposed to one thick one so because these are so small and thin it's much better to have multiple thin lines but it's not a requirement now i've skipped ahead a little bit here you can see obviously the model is painted that's because i didn't do this stage until i'd got all the way but what i've got is i've got some gw washes slapped a big loads of uh the wash on the model and then i've gone back with a wet paintbrush and i've sorry with a dry paintbrush and then i remove the excess so it soaks up the wash and then it moves it around the skin as well what this does is it tints it with interesting colors and that's it now this is the model finished we're going to do another couple of videos on the different parts I'm hoping this video has been clear. This model is huge. There's a massive amount of skin on it. It's very difficult to do the whole model for YouTube because of the just sheer amount of time that it takes. I had something like three, out, three and a half hours worth of footage on the skin alone. 
So I apologize if something hasn't been clear or I've missed something, but I do have limitations on YouTube. Got any questions or if you need me to clarify anything, feel free, seriously, let me know in the comments and I will absolutely get back to you, all right? YouTube can be a bit of a challenge because long videos just are not, they, they just don't do very well. So it can be a little bit frustrating, but I hope it's been clear. As I said, you got any questions, let me know. And once again, I really appreciate everyone's support. Thank you so much for watching and listening to me rambling. But that's it. I'll catch you later.